What up guys, so today I'm gonna show you how to make some ear cuffs and a couple different rings. Rings, ring, 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 First off, a huge thank you to the sponsor, Skillshare. The first 500 who sign up will get two months free on me. And link to that's down in the description of the video. So I tried to find most of the material from home, but there's some stuff I did buy like these little arms, the silver, a blowtorch, and some silver soldering. So we're gonna make the ear cuffs first. To do that, you're gonna cut out a piece of silver that's about a quarter of an inch wide by an inch long. You can buy silver that's already like a quarter of an inch wide and just super long, but I'm just gonna use scraps. So cool. I rounded out the corners of the silver with some scissors, a file, and some sandpaper, and you wanna get rid of all the rough edges. Next, you'll take a pair of pliers, and these ones have teeth on it, so I'm gonna wrap up the pliers, the edge of the end of the pliers with some tape. That way, it won't make big old scratches in the silver as I'm working with it and bending it. So just start bending it, and you're gonna wanna get it as round as you can. And once you have it pretty round, you can get take something that is round, like this little dowel, then you can put it on top of a hard surface, I had that little steel plate, and then just start hitting it with a hammer until it's nice and round. And there you have it, that's a little ear cusp. So now we're gonna try to make a little ring, just a simple one. So first, I gotta cut out like a little piece of wire from the silver. Again, you can buy little wires of silver, but meh. So I straighten that out, I cut it off, straighten it out even more with the pliers and then take a hammer against something hard and just rotate it as I hit it. Then to get rid of like the hard edges, I filed it down to make it nice and round. So when you work with metal like and start hammering it and bending it a lot, it'll get work hardened, which means it's like it's really like stiff and kind of brittle. To fix that, you're gonna nail it with a blowtorch. So I made some creme brulee. This is just like a kitchen blowtorch and I had to fill it up with some butane, just like that. And then, just pull down on that little metal piece in the back. You'll then click the red button in, and you'll hear the gas start, and you're gonna click it in all the way, you'll hear a click, and that will ignite it. So, if some random mom who knows how to make creme brulee can use this blowtorch, then you should have her teach me how to make creme brulee because mine was overcooked. So torch your piece of metal until it's nice and red hot. But be sure to keep the flame moving around, or otherwise you're gonna melt it like I did. So then, after you dip it in some water, it should be cool enough to touch and now it won't be so hard to bend and it won't be so brittle. So go ahead and bend that into a circle and make sure it fits the finger that you want it to fit. I'm just making this a little small one, a little midi for Romney. And then you're gonna cut off all the excess. So to start this together, you can't have a gap. What you're gonna do is you're gonna bend the metal past each other a little bit and pull it back and it should have enough spring in this metal that it will stick together. So next you're gonna use some flux. That's this stuff that I'm painting on and it, what it does is it helps the solder adhere to the metal better and then like flow easier. So then you add your solder and it shouldn't have balled up like that. So I'm gonna try it again. It wasn't working so I tried again. It just melted it, awesome. So it turns out I was using the wrong flux. That stuff right there, not the right stuff. This stuff, handy flux, the right stuff. It was all dried out, so I just took a little clump and put it on there. Took a blowtorch to it. Added the solder. Added, added this. Added the so, add, Added the solder. And this is real time. I didn't speed this one up, so you guys could see how it looks. Uh, there you go. So after dunking it in some water, I just pulled on each end to make sure that it was holding together. And I'm just gonna file off any of like the bumps and try to get rid of the seam so you can't really tell where I, I soldered it together. Then I'm gonna round it just like I did the other one. This time I used like a little drill bit. And I'm gonna sand off and file off any of the fire stain that you get from torching it. And there you go, I made a little midi. For the next one, I wanna place a rock in on top of it. So first thing I need to do is get a bigger hammer and make some little chunks. And I think I'm gonna use, I think I'm gonna use this piece right here or that piece of turquoise. So first thing I'm gonna make are the little prongs that hold the rocks in. And I broke that, but it worked out because I need two little prongs. I need two little wires. 
So I straighten them up, put one on top of the other, put the flux on, and it's important here that you use hard solder rather than the medium or easy. And I'll show you why in a little bit. Each time I torch the solder, it would just fall right off until finally I got it. So now that I got the prongs made, I'm gonna make the band. So I cut out a piece of wire a little bit wider than the band I just made. Make sure it fits my pinky. That's about the size I want for Romney. And again, got to get rid of the gap. And then soldering it, I'm going to use hard, I'm going to use hard solder again. So hard solder melts at the highest temperature, making it the hardest to melt. Next, there's medium and then easy being the easiest to melt. So after filing down the band and getting rid of any evidence of a seam, I'm going to solder the prongs onto the band and I'm going to use easy solder to do that. But when I tried it, the prongs came unsoldered. So if we rewind a bit, I'll show you what went wrong. Back here when I was putting on the solder that was supposed to be hard, it was actually easy. So then when I tried to solder it to the band with easy, it just melted and came apart. Trying to fix that broke even more. So I decided I was just going to start over and burn my table. So I got two little wires again, I used some flex, put on some hard solder this time, but it broke it because there was a gap and solder doesn't fill gaps. To make sure there wasn't a gap, as soon as the solder got all liquidy, I just pressed the top one down with some tweezers. So now I can add the prongs to the band and just using easy solder, use the tweezers to press it down and it worked. So now to place the stone. Before you place the stone, you're going to want to sand off all the fire stain and get it as shiny as you can. And then you just bend the prongs up over the stone and kind of out so that you can cut off all the excess. With that, you're going to file off all the sharp edges and you should just be able to place your stone in there. If it jiggles around a little bit, you can add some super glue to it. So I'm going to box these up because I did give these rings to Romney for Christmas. So I just used one of my old ring boxes. Made those slits. I actually made two middies because one was a different size than the other. Make sure one was fit. And then I made a handful of cusps for the same reason. So box it up. I used some old envelopes of mine to wrap it. Cute little bow and put it with her other gift. Cool. So that's the stone I used for Romney's and it came from this big stone and because I'm sentimental as f I'm gonna make another ring for myself so we have matching rings. So first thing I do is I draw out the shape that I want the stone to be and then file it down to that shape making sure that there's a flat side that can sit on my finger. Then I need a little base plate and that has to be a little bit bigger than the size of your stone. Put that aside and we're gonna make the bezel. The bezel is the thing that sits on the side of the stone and holds it in place. So I got like a long one and filed it down to be all the same size and began to bend it in the shape of that stone. Like such. You make sure that the stone still fits in there and then cut off the excess. Again, you make sure the stone will fit in there and solder it together using hard solder. You're going to file and get rid of the seam, make sure it fits again. If, if it doesn't fit, you can just sand down the stone a little bit until it does. Sand off the front side of the base plate. This will help the solder stick. Then add the flux, keep that up, then add some medium solder. Once it gets all melted together, I'm going to throw in the water and cut off all the excess sides of the base plate. I'll then take a file, get rid of the seams, and now I have a little tray for the stone to fit in. Next, to make the band, I just cut out like a little band in paper and made sure it fit my finger how I wanted, and then cut that out in metal and filed it down to the shape that I wanted. You can use like a regular circle band like the last rings, but I want to make this little U one that the little tray would fit on top. So I marked it and cut it to the size I wanted, put it on top.
and using a flex and now some easy solder just soldered it on down soldered it together and voila we have a little ring so after sanding off the stain and, and getting it shiny what you'll usually do is you'll take like a piece of wood and bend that bezel up around the stone but because my stone is so tall I just super glued it in there and super glued my finger together so everything's always okay there we have it so I gave those rings and they were to Rami for Christmas she liked them a lot she gave me this rad uh, pizza blanket that she crocheted herself and I had to wait till after Christmas and the New Year's to post this video So speaking of New Year's and like New Year's resolutions, here's where the sponsor comes in. So New Year, New You, whether you guys want to fuel your curiosity, creativity, or even career, Skillshare is the perfect place to keep you learning and thriving in 2019. Um, Skillshare, for those who don't know, it's an online learning community for creators. Uh, it has more than 25,000 classes in design, business, and, and other categories. So a premium membership will give you unlimited access so that you can join the classes and communities that are just right for you and your new year goal. I found a couple silversmithing classes on there when I was looking and I want to learn how to make earrings because I think that'd be pretty cool and I think it'd be cool to check out what these teachers teach because I'm sure their methods are a little bit different than what I do. So the first 500 of you guys to use the link in the description below will get two months free on me. So you guys can try it out, see if you like it, if you don't, no worries. If you do like it, one of the best things about Skillshare is it's super affordable. An annual subscription is less than $10 a month. So you guys can try that out, join more than the 7 million creators that are learning with Skillshare, and learn something new today. Cool. Okay, so I realized jumping on the trap wasn't the best way to show you these rings. So here's some close-up shots of them. Also, I was thinking about making little kits that had all the stuff you needed to make one ring. And that way you wouldn't have to buy a bunch of random stuff. Let me know what you guys think about that in the comments below. Don't be sweet. Look at the Ah! <laughs> 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 yeah!